Climate change is the greatest challenge mankind has ever faced. The science is clear, the evidence inescapable. So we can't go on pretending it's not happening. But when we think of ways to slow down global warming, we think of issues like coal-fired power stations and transportation. What we've been ignoring is the most immediate and cost-effective solution to climate change lies in protecting tropical forests. The CO2 released from deforestation produces more emissions than the entire world's transportation sector combined. These forests also provide valuable ecosystem services, such as rainfall, water storage, flood control, biodiversity, and shelter for local communities. In 2004, the Coalition for Rainforest Nations was established to ensure the world community gave forests their proper value and funded their conservation as a vital first step to solving climate change. The first global climate treaty, the Kyoto Protocol, recognized the benefits of planting forests, but did not provide incentives to avoid deforestation, even though it accounts for at least 20% of global carbon emissions. The nations protecting their forests were left out. Something had to change. In 2005, coalition nations Papua New Guinea and Costa Rica introduced a simple yet revolutionary concept into the UN climate negotiations. Pay developing countries and local communities for not cutting down their forests and create the most effective, low-cost and immediate climate change solution available. Known as Red Plus, or Reduced Emissions from Deforestation and Forest Degradation, it seeks to make trees worth more standing than cut down. It fundamentally changed the way the world looked at forests. After only two years, at the Bali Climate Change Conference, the coalition successfully fought to have forests and Red Plus accepted as part of the solution to climate change. This was a major victory, but it did not come easily. You know, the formulation that has been put forward, we cannot accept. Thank you. And I would ask the United States, if for some reason you're not willing to leave, leave it to the rest of the rest of us. Please get out of the way. Together, coalition nations are a formidable force in the global climate negotiations, pushing for sustainable development for their people while holding industrialized countries accountable for serious emission reductions. But in order for Red Plus to work, safeguards must be sufficiently broad to provide for the inclusion and meaningful participation of local communities and indigenous people in and around the forests. As stewards of the rainforests, indigenous people deserve tangible benefits from Red Plus activities. The coalition has assumed a lead role by building partnerships with forest communities and bridging their interests with the United Nations climate talks. If the coalition was not existing, small countries having forests who are not enough strong, like Brazil, India, and so on, could not achieve uh, their goal during those negotiations. And the coalition helped those countries to be stronger. A small country like Honduras cannot go to all the sessions but uh, we go to some of them. But when we go uh, to the meeting with the coalition, we'll get to know what's going on in all the sessions, you know, in all the meetings. So that makes a difference. The coalition is working with developing countries to link Red Plus to low carbon development plans that encourage sustainable economic growth and environmental protection. These low carbon growth strategies seek to ensure that developing countries don't simply repeat the mistakes that developed countries have made. Working with each country's specific needs and priorities, the plans aim to ensure that their economic development is climate compatible. The evolution of Red Plus has broadened the definition of forest ecosystem services, and the coalition is continuing to ensure that those ecosystem services are addressed by the UNFCCC. The coalition's work 
has defined an essential weapon to combat the calamitous effects of climate change on a global scale. The path is clear, but the effort must be magnified in order to preserve the rainforests for the benefit of generations to come.